women i'm not married to by franklin p adams this is a LibriVox recording all LibriVox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. reading by mark Perrard. women i'm not married to by franklin pierce adams whenever i take my walks you know the rest abroad i always meet elaine or maud or anne or flo belinda blanche or marguerite and melancholy bitter sweet sets seal upon me when i view coldly and from a judgment seat the women i'm not married to not mine the sighs for long ago not mine to mourn the obsolete with burns and shelley keats and poe i have no yearning to compete no dead sea pickled pears i eat i never touch a drop of rue i toast and drink my pleasures neat the women i'm not married to fate with her celebrated blow frequently knocks me off my feet and life her dice-box chucks a throw that usually has me beat yet although love has tried to treat me rough award the kid his due look at the list though incomplete the women i'm not married to my dears whom gracefully i greet gaze at these lucky ladies who are of to make this thing concrete the women i'm not married to elaine there have been more beautiful girls than elaine for i have read about them and i have utter faith in the printed word and i expect my public a few of whom are just for a second more than two and a quarter million weekly to put the same credence in my printed word when i said there have been more beautiful girls than elaine i lied there haven't been she was a darb blue were her eyes as the fairy flax her eyebrows were like curved snowdrifts her neck was like the swan her face it was the fairest that e'er the sun shone on she walked in beauty like the night her lips were like the cherries ripe that sunny walls of boreas screen her teeth were like a flock of sheep with fleeces newly washed and clean her hair was like the curling mist that shades the mountain side at the inn and oh she danced in such a way no sun upon an easter day was half so fine a sight if i may interrupt the poets i should say she was one pip she was i might add kind of pretty enchantment was hers and fairyland her exclusive province i would walk down a commonplace street with her and it would become the primrose path and a one-way path at that with nobody but us on it if i said it was a nice day and if i told her that once i told her a hundred times she would say isn't it my very words to isabel when i telephoned her this morning so we had i said to myself a lot in common and after a conversation like that i would go home and lie awake and think if two persons can be in such harmony about the weather a fundamental thing a thing that prehistoric religions actually were based upon what possible discord ever could be between us for i have known families to be rent with disagreements as to meteorological conditions isn't this my sister used to say a nice day no my reply used to be it's a dreadful day it's blowy and it's going to rain and i would warn my mother that my sister amy or that child was likely to grow up into a liar but as i have tried to hint beauty was elaine's and when she spoke of the weather i used to feel sorry for everybody who had lived in the olden times from yesterday back to the afternoon adam told eve that no matter how hot it was they always got a breeze before there was any weather at all it wasn't only the weather we used to agree on other things once when she met a schoolgirl friend in hyde park whom she hadn't seen since a year ago out in lakeview she said that it was a small world after all and i told her she never said a truer word and about golf she didn't think she said one day that it was as strenuous as tennis but it certainly took you out in the open air well that was how i felt about it too so you see it wasn't just the weather though at that time i thought that would be enough 
well one day we were walking along and she looked at me and said i wonder if you'd like me so much if i were pretty it came over me that i shouldn't no i said i should not that's the first honest thing you ever said to me she said no it isn't i said it is too was her rejoinder it's nothing of the kind i said yes it is she said her petulant temper getting the better of her so we parted on that and i often think how lucky i am to have escaped from elaine's distrust of honesty and from her violent and passionate temper maud maud and i might have been happy together she was not the kind you couldn't be candid with she used to say she admired honesty and sincerity above all other traits and she was deeply interested in me which was natural enough as i had no reservations no reticences from her i believed that when you cared about a girl it was wrong to have secrets from her and that was her policy too though now and then she carried it too far one day i telephoned her and asked her what she had been doing that morning i have been reading the most fascinating book she said what book i asked politely i can't remember the title she said but it's about a man in love with a girl and he who wrote it i interrupted wait a minute said maud i waited four minutes sorry to have kept you waiting she said i mislaid the book i thought i left it in my room and i looked all around for it and then i asked Holda if she'd seen it and she said no though i asked her that the other day about something else and she said no and later i found out that she had seen it and put it in a drawer so i went to the library and the book wasn't there and then i went back to my room and looked again and i was just coming back to tell you i couldn't find it when here it is guess where right on the telephone stand who wrote it hutchinson hutchinson is the author a m s no wait a minute a s m hutchinson not hutchinson there's an n in it two n's really but i mean an n between the i and the s i mean it's hutchinson not hutchison but what's the difference who writes a book as long as it's a good book there may have been more but i was reasonably certain that the author's name was hutchinson so i hung up the receiver though the way i felt at the time was that hanging was too good for it i had dinner with her that night at a restaurant coffee asked the waiter no i said and to her coffee keeps me awake if i took a cup now i wouldn't close an eye all night some folks can drink it and not notice it but take me i'm funny that way and if i took a cup now i wouldn't close an eye all night some can and some can i like it but it doesn't like me ha ha i wouldn't close an eye all night and if i don't get my sleep and a good eight hours at that i'm not fit for a thing all the next day it's a pretty important thing sleep and it was important to maud self-centered thing that she was here was i confiding to her something i never had told another soul and she wasn't merely dozing she was asleep i rattled a knife against a plate and she awoke it was a good thing i found out about her in time anne in winter when the ground was white i thought that anne would be all right in summer quite the other way i knew she'd never be okay she liked to go to the theatre but what she went for was to be amused as there was enough sadness in real life without going to the theatre for it she told me that i was just a great big boy that all men in fact were just little boys grown up i took her to a movie show and she read most of the captions to me slowly and when she read them to herself her lips moved she never took a drink in days of old when booze was sold and barrooms held their sway that is my line not anne's but now she takes a cocktail when one is offered saying this may be my last chance women she told me didn't like her much but she didn't care as she was she always said a man's woman just the same folks said she told me that she was wonderful in a sick room and so 
what with the movies and one thing and another the winter passed she was glad i was a tennis player and we'd have some exciting sets in the summer no she said games i should have known then but i was thinking of her hair and how cool it was to stroke well one may afternoon there we were on the tennis court it belonged to a friend of hers and it hadn't been rolled recently nor marked though you could tell that here a base line and there a service line once had been i asked her which court she wanted and she said it didn't matter she played equally rottenly on both sides nor was that i found it overstating things she served and called ready before each service when she sent a ball far outside she called home run or just out and if i served a double fault she said either too bad or thank you when the score was deuce she called it juice and when i beat her six to zero as you could have done or you or even you she said she was off her game that it was a lot closer than the score indicated that she'd beat me before the summer was over that didn't the net seem terribly low or something and that i wasn't used to playing with women or i wouldn't hit the ball so hard all the time little remains to be told anne is now the wife of a golfing banker wednesday night i met her at a party golf she echoed oh yes that is i don't play it i play at it tennis is really my game but i haven't had a racket in my hand in two years we must have some of our games again i nearly beat you last time remember flo i hadn't seen flo since she was about fourteen so when i got a letter asking me to call i said i'd go she was pretty but the older i get the fewer girls i see that aren't of course i ought to have known the letter was addressed with a four preceding my name instead of city or the name of the town flo had written local even a professional detective should have known then it was just her refined vocabulary that sent me reeling into the night she wondered where i resided and how long i'd been located there she had purchased something she had gowned when she meant dressed she had gotten tired she said of affectation she said she had retired early the night before and she spoke of a boot limmer and as i was leaving she said don't remain away so long this time er uh, you know hath no fury like a woman scorned belinda i remember belinda she was arguing with another young woman about the car fare let me pay said belinda and she paid there i mused is a perfect woman nobly planned i met her shortly after that and she came through many a test once i saw her go up to an elevated railroad station hand in a nickel and not say one please once i asked her about what day it was and she said wednesday without adding all day she spoke once of a cultivated taste without adding like olives and once said that's another story without adding as kipling says and once and that was the day i nearly begged her to be mine when she said that something had been grossly exaggerated she failed to giggle like the report of mark twain's death so you see belinda had points she had a dog that wasn't more intelligent than most human beings she wasn't forever saying that there was no reason why a man and a woman shouldn't be just good pals she didn't put me at ease the way the others did by looking at me for three minutes and then saying that good looks didn't matter much to a man after all she didn't when you gave her something take it and say coyly for me as who should say you dear thoughtful thing when you might have brought it for john d rockefeller and she didn't say that she couldn't draw a straight line or that she had no card sense or that she couldn't write a decent letter she could write a decent letter she did lots of them to me too she wrote the best letters i ever read they were intelligent humorous and why shouldn't i tell the truth ardent fervid is nearer 
candescent is not far off and that is how i lost her p s she wrote burn this letter and all of them a few weeks later belinda said at the rate i write you my letters must fill a large drawer by this time why i said i burned them they're all burned i never want to see you again as long as i live she said good-bye and my good-bye was the last communication between me and belinda blanche blanche is a girl i'd hate to wed because of a lot of things she said excuse my french when she says gee whiz on the telephone guess who this is you ask her did she like the show or book she'll say well yes and no for the kitty she buys a comfy nighty she says my bestest and all righty if i had no humor i'd simply die says blanche i know that that's a lie she wouldn't marry oh heaven forbid men are such brutes you said it kid marguerite marguerite was an agreer she strove and not without success to please she hated an argument one reason perhaps being i found this out later that she couldn't put one fourth on any subject but i had theories in the days of marguerite and i wanted to know whether she was in sympathy with them one of my theories was that a lot of domestic infelicity could be avoided if a husband didn't keep his business affairs to himself if he made a confidant a possible assistant of his wife i had contempt for the women whose boast it was that fred never brings business into the house so i used to talk to marguerite about that theory when we were married wouldn't it be better to discuss the affairs of the business day at home with her certainly because simply talking about them was something and maybe she could even help yes that was what a wife was for why should a man keep his thoughts bottled up just because his wife wasn't in his office with him no reason at all i agree with you perfectly about politics wasn't this man harding doing a good job and weren't things looking pretty good everything considered he certainly is and they certainly are was marguerite's adroit summing up well i had theories about books and child labor and pictures and clam chowder and harry leon wilson's stuff and music and the younger generation and cord tires and things like that and she'd agree with everything i said then one night as in a vision something came to me i had a theory that it would be terrible to have somebody around all the time who agreed with you about everything marguerite agreed i had another theory don't you agree i put it that we shouldn't get along at all well and never had she agreed more quickly i thought she really put her heart into it and we never should have hit it off either End of women i'm not married to by Franklin Pierce Adams.